I'm Alicia Hernández Robles, a student of the institution of the Funduk in Al Andalus. Um, in my presentation today, rather than presenting some results of my research, I'm going to share some of the questions that occurred to me uh, when dealing with the study uh, of the Funduk, as well as some possible answers. The goal is to contribute to the debate uh, still open within archaeology about what we should understand uh, by medieval archaeology and Islamic archaeology and see how other participants in this session have raised some of these issues. To begin with, we need to define what a funduk is. The funduk is Arab Islamic in origin and it has an urban character. It is generally understood as an inn with a, a warehouse and a stable for merchants, pilgrim, pilgrims and travelers of all religions and geographical origins. In this building, commercial transactions between foreign merchants and local merchants in, of the city used to take place. The products obtained uh, in the funduk were later sold uh, in the souk or in the alcaiceria. Its study is being carried out through an interdisciplinary methodology joining the historical study of documental sources and the archaeological study of material remains. Some of the objectives proposed in my PhD project are to analyze the origin of the funduk in Al-Andalus, to characterize the institution of the funduk to identify its structure and to know about its use and functioning during the Middle Ages, and to identify their survival and transformation with the later development of other institutional forms derived from, from it, such as the Alondiga or the Italian Fondaco, especially after its adoption by non-Islamic societies. In short, it is about contributing to the economic, social and political history of Al-Andalus and the extension of the medieval Mediterranean understood as a sea of contacts or trade and also confrontations in which travel was an important means of both commercial and cultural exchange. The fact that the funduk uh, is found along the Mediterranean and was a meeting place of different religious and political groups uh, made me to be interested in the approach of the global history. The funduk is a quadrangular building with one or two floors in height with modest dimensions and decoration. Its dependencies are arranged around a central courtyard, generally porticoed with arches or lintels. Usually, they did not have uh, openings to the outside except the entrance opening. On the ground floor, we uh, would find the warehouse and the stables, while the rooms would be located on the first floor. In the center of the courtyard was a well or a pool that travelers could use and a water system that was used for the evacuation of the latrines of the building. This system will be very important to determine archaeologically if we are facing a public or a private building. Although this type of infrastructure and its layout remain, there were changes in the use of these buildings. For example, there was a progressive specialization both of the groups that frequented these buildings and of the products that were sold inside them. At, at the same time, uh, the use as accommodation was lost, uh, leaving only for commercial transactions. We could see that in, the, the, in their denominations. We know, for instance, the Alondi of the Genoese uh, the Fondag of the Itedeschi, and also the Salt Alondiga. In addition, the use of this building will no longer occur only in territory under Islamic rule. But Castilians, Aragonese, and Italians will also create or maintain the, this institution in their territories. Furthermore, we should take into consideration the particularity of the Iberian Peninsula with his process of Christian conquest, the name Reconquista. Some of these commercial buildings have different faces 
of use extending until the 13th century, as some of those identified uh, in Murcia and Denia. For this reason, the possibility that the building would have continuing use when the political control passed from Islamic to Christian hands should be considered. So, the archaeological study of this type of building in Al-Andalus ceases to be Islamic archaeology to become medieval archaeology in the same site. What about the Italian fundati in the early Middle Ages? And is the change in archaeology depending on the territory in which our object of, of study is located real? This peculiarity has also been addressed by Carvajal in his review of uh, archaeology of Al-Andalus, which he considers both Islamic and, uh, and medieval. However, he mentions the importance of counterbalance the essentialism of Milwright's concept of Islamic archaeology with the broader approach of archaeology of Islam of Insol. Milwright defines the Islamic archaeology as a subdiscipline of archaeology that is dedicated to the study of Islamic occupation phases understood as periods of territories under control of an Islamic elite. While Insol proposes that all facets of life can be structured by religion, that is, that the Muslim community should be recognizable in the archaeological record, even in areas where it is a minority. Understanding that Islam influences everything, not only the Muslim community, Carvajal supports an archaeology of identities for the study of the different identities in Al Andalus, religious or not. I see his point, but applying this perspective to the study of the Funduk doesn't seem to me a clear solution either. I do not consider that the archaeological study is determined by who the promoter of the Funduk was, who controlled it, or the group that used it. The archaeological study of its infra infrastructure follows the same methodology independently of the conclusions that we could establish after the analysis and the interpretation of the material remains. Therefore, it's really different to do Islamic archaeology of an Andalusian funduk and medieval archaeology of a Castilian alondiga or an Italian fundaco. In my opinion, these aspects do not determine the type of archaeology that it's ex executed. The labels we add to archaeology serve rather to establish a context in which to frame a narrative uh, that allows both researchers and non-specialized uh, public to quickly classify uh, or relate a site to a culture. If we could accept that the chronological <coughs> compartmentalization of historical periods and consequently archaeology is artificial, isn't it as artificial to make a distinction based on cultural, geographical, or religious criteria? Although knowing the cultural context of archaeology of archaeological record that we are studying is something basic to propose hypotheses or interpretations, are the techniques that are used not what really should define the archaeological practice? In short, I consider that the material remains uh, can be related to certain social and religious practices with the identity of a root, but not archaeology as a discipline. It is really difficult to know if the objects that were used within the funduk ascribed to the Islamic culture were used by people of other cultural traditions who simply took advantage of them without paying uh, too much attention to its symbolism or, or production process. I hope that biochemical research in medieval context could help to provide further information to know, for example, some aspects of the customer's diet, to know more about them. It is true that taking the chronological criteria, making medieval archaeology available to cover everything, can be criticized for eliminating the heterogeneity or specificity of a historical period. However, I believe that we should try to reduce the compartmentalization um, that we establish in the disciplines of study without abandoning the continued reflection of, on the universality that we weave to a concept during our research um, due to our Eurocentric bias. We should find the balance between not overlooking the specificity of our object of study and falling into, into new ways of centrism. 
As I said at the beginning, the presence of the funduk in different geographies and its incorporation and use by different societies is what has led me to deepen into the global history. Especially suggestive is the tracing methodology proposed by the uh, global history. It would consist in following the trail of this institution through the places um, where it materializes without restricting its, its study. As a result, it allows to obtain as much information as possible from the funduk, not only in relation to commercial activities as a main function, but also in terms of, for example, um, social and gender history. This generates new spatial and temporal frames that uh, transcend traditional divisions in research. Therefore, it is about applying the global perspective to know both the causes of origin and evolution of this institution, as well as in the inter interactions that take place within it at different scales, and that allow the study of the funduk to contribute to the knowledge of processes of global, of global interaction. In this case, of the connections and exchanges between the source of the Mediterranean and the impact uh, they had on people, groups, and societies. The interest of this perspective is that beyond showing that there were connections in the Middle Ages, it is about determining the impact of those connections, of which the Fundu was the setting. Due to the recent interest in the global Middle Ages, there has been a recent development of archaeological theory based uh, on assemblage theory. Jervis suggests that this theoretical approach could be more productive to evaluate the multi-scale interaction, the local, local and global processes that occur and define life in Middle Ages. Following the theoretical proposals of the Luz and Watery and later of the Landa, Jervis sees the assemblage, the assemblage theory as an alternative approach uh, since it not only pays attention to the relationship between the center and the periphery, but in a greater, greater variety of ways. That is, consider the object of study as a set of associations and relationships. Although, although it, it's uh, still early days for evaluating assemblage theory uh, and its role for archaeologists, it is presented as a useful approach to show the variety of effects that commercial interactions had at different levels. In the case of the Funduk, the number of these buildings in different territories must be identified. After that, to determine the functioning of the Funduk will allow to see the relations between these buildings among themselves and with the areas in which they are located. And at the same time, the analysis of its presence and impact in the global and temporal context should be conducted. The aim is to analyze the integration of the Funduk in local communities, as well as in a global sphere in the political and commercial medieval networks. In conclusion, the issues that, that have been raised when developing the theoretical framework of the doctoral thesis make me think that archaeology should not be uh, restricted by cultural or geographical criteria, although these are basic for the accurate interpretation of the data obtained at the materials found during the uh, archaeological excavation process. On the other hand, the characteristics of our object of study, raised briefly in this talk, have made me consider that the application of the approach of the global Middle Ages as a perspective of analysis will allow us to obtain as much information as possible about the Funduk, as an institution that arises in the Islamic world but ends up uh, being acquired by European territories, which had consequences in the institution itself and in the areas and societies in which it is located. Thank you very much for listening.